Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Multiple stimulus updates out today, especially with insights from the Biden camp and Congress. I'll also provide some updates on the election and COVID. Let's quickly get the election updates out of the way after I mentioned to make sure to use that Black Friday month coupon code. It's the entire month you can use this coupon code. It will expire after Black Friday though, so check that out down below and always email me for a bundle coupon code at kevin at meetkevin.com. Let's get into it. The Trump team thus far has lost 34 court cases with a recent loss in Pennsylvania where a judge called the Trump legal team team's arguments put together like a Frankenstein monster. This Pennsylvania judge is a Republican and a member of the Federalist Society in Pennsylvania, which leans right. Trump stated on Twitter that he will be appealing the Pennsylvania loss, and defenders of the Trump team say sworn affidavits were ignored in this ruling, setting up Trump's opportunity to appeal this latest case. Sidney Powell, who recently tore into the Dominion voting systems, alleging that they're subject to foreign influence, have servers in Germany, and are even potentially manipulated by Venezuela, along with many other allegations of voter fraud, is now being distanced from the Trump legal team led by Rudy Giuliani, as some of her allegations are being debunked, or potentially seen as too extreme. In a statement Sunday, Giuliani's team said, quote, Sidney Powell is practicing law on her own. She is not a member of Trump's legal team. She is not a lawyer for the president in his personal capacity. This morning, a group of 100 former national security experts and Republicans signed a joint letter urging Trump to concede, citing national security. Mitch McConnell said, this letter is irrelevant that this election process is normal and we will swear in the next administration on January 20th, whichever it will end up being. At the same time, Biden will be meeting with a virtual will be meeting virtually with mayors to conduct his transition. This comes after Biden met with numerous governors last Friday, using governors as a conduit for getting transition related information that the Trump team is refusing to provide Biden access to, but is giving access to governors to. Latest information is going to existing governors, and so Biden is going to the governor governors to get that information. Former Jersey Governor Chris Christie who was Trump's debate coach prior to the election and prior to him getting COVID, said it's time for Trump's fight to end. And this fight has become a, quote, national embarrassment. Chris Christie joins Senator Toomey, who called on Trump to concede this weekend. At the same time, there are also growing reports that big tech censoring pro-Trump information or anti-Biden information may have actually artificially influenced the election in Biden's favor. On stimulus, the New York Times today reported a detailed story that Biden is planning for the increasing chance that we will head into a double dip recession in early 2021. Biden's team is now pushing Congress to urgently strike a stimulus deal, especially to provide relief to schools and families and prevent an eviction crisis and an unemployment crisis. The New York Times believes this might pressure Democrats to move closer to Republicans and strike a smaller deal. However, Biden's spokesperson spoke on behalf of this article and said that Biden does not support reducing stimulus demands just to get a deal done. Instead, the spokesperson for Biden said, quote, the president-elect fully supports the speaker and leader in their negotiations. In other words, Biden is doubling down, fully supporting the $2.2 to $2.4 trillion HEROES Act, which Democrats passed in the House. In the meantime, Biden's team is working on a larger potential infrastructure package to keep jobs immediately in place. Keep in mind, any infrastructure spending would likely be very powerful for electric vehicle related companies. Tesla is up 6% today. NIO is up almost 7% today. Xping Autos and Li Autos, both Chinese companies are up over 14 and 18% today as well. The EV sector is exploding as the EV sector sees a potential Biden win as good for US-China relations and good for the energy space. Biden may also slow the payback of deferred payroll taxes from Trump's payroll tax holiday, reducing the impact of this payroll tax holiday when next year comes around and people have to start paying back these back payroll taxes. Remember, Donald Trump said if he was reelected, he would permanently waive that payroll tax. Furthermore, Biden is considering reversing a move by the Treasury Secretary to end the $454 billion funding for the Treasury programs. From the point of view of this negotiation with Republicans on stimulus, the ending of these programs is actually not terrible. 
Type into YouTube, meet Kevin Treasury ends bailout for a full explanation here. But in short, the Treasury bailout ending wasn't very much needed by the market. And there was a mischaracterization of the Main Street lending program's actual effectiveness. And so this $454 billion is a good tool for helping stimulus negotiations progress. However, Biden says that his team is interested in maintaining these programs and might be interested in providing a stimulus package like the HEROES Act plus reestablishing these programs. Biden's team does realize though that America needs a stimulus package during the lame duck session of Congress, that we do not have time to wait. Economists working with Biden say that without a stimulus package in the lame duck session of Congress, we will be in a recession again in the first quarter of 2021. This means we may see a slower recovery in 2021 and then back to stronger growth in 2022 once we have full vaccination. However, in the first half of the year, we'd be likely to lose another 3 million jobs permanently and the unemployment rate could climb from 6.9% to 10% again, signaling and entering us into another double dip recession, or I guess a double dip recession. Despite all of this, Congress is on recess this week. This is seen as unbelievable during the incredible hardship our country is now facing, especially in the coming weeks after Thanksgiving, in which a lot of experts are expecting we will see a massive surge in COVID cases. After this week, Congress goes back to work for three weeks. However, that might actually be cut short due to the risk of congressmen and women catching COVID at Capitol Hill. This means the three working weeks may actually be more like one and a half to two working weeks right after the government's budget is passed December 11th. Though there are even arguments about whether or not this package for funding the government will actually pass. There are already disagreements over funding, especially with how to appropriate funding for veterans services as either emergency or non-emergency spending. And this is creating roadblocks to even getting a government funding bill done by December 11th. Representative Ro Khanna renewed his calls for $2,000 per month in stimulus and renewed eviction protections at the same time. In fairness to thousands of retail and hospitality and restaurant workers, people have to keep working because right now there is fear that the eviction hammer will drop on January 4th, which is the first Monday in January, without Congress providing relief. And right now us being able to rely on Congress seems not that reasonable. Representative AOC says if people are being told to stay home, we should be paying their bills. That is, Congress should be paying their bills. This comes at the same time as Germany is stepping up its stimulus spending to support its citizens during the shutdown, which may be extended to December 20th. Germany's lockdown light was supposed to end at the end of November. And while cases have flattened, cases are still too high to end their lockdown. France is officially facing a double dip recession. On COVID, the TSA recorded 3 million people traveling in the last three days, the highest numbers we have seen since March. A synagogue in Brooklyn also held a 7,000 member maskless wedding and singing celebration. This weekend celebration defies local orders, putting officials in a difficult place for fear as coming across as anti-Semitic. Restaurants are also now building outdoor seating with structures that kind of basically look like buildings. In fact, here is one such example where outdoor dining is basically starting to look like indoor dining, but because it's technically built outside the restaurant, it still qualifies as outdoor dining. That's sort of the situation we're in, given that we are now in the winter months and it's cold to eat outside. California's governor, Gavin Newsom, will be quarantining after three of his children were potentially exposed to a CHP security detail officer who did test positive for COVID. On COVID, cases are down to 141,648. We're still up on a 14-day average dramatically, 54%. Generally, though, keep in mind that Sunday and Monday's data comes in low, so this, this, this is normal. Expect numbers to go up again Tuesday, Thursday, well, Tuesday through Saturday, basically. There you have the update for today. Make sure to get your four free stocks with Weeble when you deposit $100. Get your life insurance in as little as five minutes. Check out the courses link down below. And folks, we'll see you next time.